you for joining me today. My name is Leanne Tibbetts. I work as a Rural Leadership Specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. Today, we'll spend some time discussing how to implement a board orientation process within your organization. Manitoba Agriculture industry leadership staff are providing these free webinars to build the organizational capacity of our ag sector. This information is designed for informational purposes. Organizations should consult their legal prof professionals or professional advisors related to specific situations that they are experiencing in their or own organization. Today we'll cover a variety of topics, including the benefits of implementing an orientation process. We will discuss who should be involved in the orientation. I'll break down the process to cover what should be in your orientation manual. And I will talk about what you can cover or discuss at an in-person meeting. We will talk about the strategies to increase success and finish up with some resources and tools that might assist your organization as they develop an orientation process. Without proper training, board members can become angry, frustrated, unproductive, and ineffective. A board orientation process provides new board members with the information and training that is required to understand the purpose of the organization, how the organization is structured, how it functions, and what the new board member roles and responsibilities include. A new board member often will have anxiety about joining a new board or organization, and a comprehensive orientation can set the stage for success. Whenever I ask organizations what type of orientation process they use, the responses do vary. But I do hope you find this information practical and that all organizations are motivated to put a board orientation process together following this webinar. All organizations should have an orientation process. And here are a few reasons why. It directly impacts the success of your organization. A process helps to outline the history, the culture uh, of your organization, and transfers information to the new person. It helps to communicate expectations of the board member, and a comprehensive orientation will even shorten the learning curve and save you time. It saves the organization money in the long run because new board members receive the training and information up front. They know how to be part of the organization, how to be part of a productive board meeting, and that can save the organization money. An orientation also helps to link strategic planning with budgeting and decision making, and it helps to ensure that the organization has the infrastructure and capacity to carry out its mission and activities. So there's an effective use of resources as well. All of these components help to engage new board members and foster positive relationships from the start. The conversations and discussion that happen during the orientation are so beneficial. You want to create that welcoming atmosphere right off the bat, and a formal orientation process can help do just that. We know that everyone is extremely busy, those within and outside your organization. But getting the right people involved in an orientation process is important. Find the time to make it a priority when a new board member is preparing to join your team. So when we think about who should be involved, the most important is, of course, the new board member. They must attend. The rest can vary, but it is often the chair or president of the organization, the executive director or a main staff member, and a chair of the nominating membership or governance committee. Involve people that will inspire new board members and set the stage for success and set a positive tone that complements the nature and culture of your organization. Choose positive people that will be enthusiastic. Involve key people that are role models or leaders within your organization. The length and the complexity of the orientation process is dependent on the state of your organization and the knowledge, skills, and experience of the new member or director joining your organization. If they have served on a variety of boards, the orientation may be different 
than if the person is a new first-time director. The board must determine what the right length and format are based on the organization's needs and the new board member's needs. Sometimes an orientation can take a few hours and others are a few days long. Small organizations will sometimes have a short or a long orientation. Large organizations sometimes have a short or long. Dependent on the state of your uh, organization, if there's a lot of flux or a change in mandate or financial uncertainty, sometimes that will require the organization to have a more comprehensive and a longer orientation. If board members are situated across the country, then perhaps you'll use technology to meet for your orientation. If a board member has volunteered for the organization for a number of years and knows the history, um, the orientation may of course be shorter. But determine what your new board member needs and provide an appropriate orientation accordingly. When the orientation is provided depends on the organization. Some will do an orientation once a year in conjunction with an annual retreat or a conference. Others will hold it with a, um, at a specific time during the year. Typically, the orientation immediately follows recruitment or the onboarding process. Just ensure the orientation happens prior to the new board member's first board meeting. Regardless, inspire the new board member, motivate them, and make the orientation process professional, yet engaging and fun. Have a clear purpose and a plan to follow. I referenced that there are two components to the orientation process, and they include the package of information which is provided to the new board member for their own personal review, and a meeting or an in-depth conversation about the organization. And I'm going to go into both in detail. The package of information is often referred to as a board orientation package, a board manual, some call it a welcome to the board kit, or a new board member manual, or even an orientation handbook. There is no right or wrong name. This package of information is the main tool that is used to orientate a new board member, and you can call it as you wish. Regardless of the format, whether it's electronic or print, just be sure it's up to date. The information is easy to locate, and it must have a table of contents or dividers or clear sections so that it is user-friendly and easy to follow. If it's easy to use, new board members will use it and reference the document frequently. Ensure your board orientation manual is put together with a professional look. It must be polished. Ensure other people in your organization proofread a copy to catch grammatical errors, omissions, or spelling errors. Leave that copy and that orientation package with the new board member. You want that person to go through the package completely, read it from front to back as soon as they agree to join the organization. Let them keep it. Let them review it and reflect on the information when they have questions or when they need additional information. So when we think about what's in an orientation package and when you're beginning to pull the information together for your package, Think about what someone needs to know about your organization. I've provided an example here. Often there'll be a table of contents and the first section is an organizational profile. So it'll tell people about the history of your organization, may include a strategic plan. Then you can include some of your foundation or legal documents like your bylaws, your articles of incorporation, any permits, licenses, contracts or agreements that you might have. It's often important to include uh, an updated copy of your policies and procedures. And we want new board members to understand the board operations. So include an organizational chart, a list of your board members, position descriptions for your executive, um, outline the roles and responsibilities of the board, um, provide them with a list of committees or working groups that function within your organization, the code of conduct, some of the pre, um, previous meeting minutes, and even a copy of your board activity calendar so that they know what happens in the course of an annual cycle in your organization. In the financial section, often there'll be a current budget, um, year-end financial statements, indicate who has signing authority for your organization. And um, 
Including some board education and resources is also another important aspect. You can include some fact sheets um, on board governance, effective meetings, anything that you wish in that section. If you do have personnel, I'd encourage you to have a, a staff chart, contact list for your staff, and even position descriptions so that new board members will know what uh, staff are required to be doing. A copy um, of a board manual template is available for your use on our industry leadership website. So I would encourage you to visit our website and uh, click on the template. And then you can modify that template to meet your needs as you design your own board manual. So a binder and a handshake to welcome a new board member really isn't enough, though. We need that second phase of the orientation process, and that's the meeting. This meeting is a very important aspect of the orientation process where relationships evolve and begin to develop as the new board member gets to know the organization and its people and vice versa. New board members should already have gone through the orientation package or the manual ahead of time and they should be familiar with the content. When you get together face to face or online if you're a national organization, have a discussion and highlight some of the critical information from the orientation manual, but refrain from going through it page by page or line by line. Instead, talk about the legal structure. New members should know if the organization is incorporated. Is it a registered charity? If so, is the charity in good standing? Is the organization up to date on filing? These are all things that new members should know before joining the organization. It's also important to review some documents, have them sign a board member agreement, the confidentiality form, conflict of interest policy, um, the code of conduct, which clearly outlines what the expectations are for new directors. You can also spend some time discussing um, if your organization carries directors and officers liability insurance. You can talk about whether or not you have an indemnification clause in your policies. You can discuss the fiduciary duties of a director, remembering that a fiduciary is an individual that has a legal duty to act on behalf of another, and in this case, it would be on behalf of the organization. Remember that there are two main fiduciary duties, and that's duty of care, where the fiduciary, the director, him, him or herself, is required to act with a certain level of skill and to be informed. The duty of loyalty, which requires directors to act honestly, and in good faith, having the best interests of the organization in mind above their personal interests. If the organization has any required training, this would be a great opportunity to discuss what that training includes. Maybe it's on board governance, meeting management, or being a board member. So please discuss and outline that training with the new board member um, so that they're clear on what expectations there are. Don't forget to ask the new board member if they need or would like additional governance or leadership training so that they are prepared. They may have some other ideas of what could benefit them. We also really include, encourage um, individuals to take new board members on a tour. Show them the office building, the research facility, the boardroom, the organization's grounds, and introduce them to everyone so that they meet other staff, volunteers, directors, and board members. And I always like to encourage people to finish up with a question and answer opportunity. An orientation should be thought provoking. Ensure that you know why they're there and that they know that you're there to help them along the way. Ensure your organization knows why they've come to join your organization so that you can ensure you meet their needs and it's a positive experience for them. Ask them what attracted them to your organization and why they want to become a member or find out if they believe in your mission and ask them if this is a good fit for them. There are a number of other strategies organizations have used and can use to increase their success. I always encourage people to pair a new board member with a mentor or a board buddy. And this can motivate experienced board members, foster friendships, and if you pair people with similar interests, skills, and experience, uh, you can set the stage for lifelong friendships, relationships, and long-term success. 
let new board members know your organization has an open door policy, if you do, and encourage communication and questions. Tell them to come to you or their mentor at any time and provide them with the assurance that you will support them. Often I have seen organizations use name tags at the first few meetings when a new board member attends or even using place cards on the, on the board table so that it helps the new person remember who is who. It's your responsibility as a leader within the organization to follow up with new board members. Check in with them after you've sent them the board manual. Check in with them before the first board meeting, after the first board meeting, and then periodically throughout the first year to ensure that they're getting what they want to out of your organization and the volunteer opportunity. It must be a win-win situation for everyone. Don't forget um, to do an exit interview with departing directors. Ask them what your organization could have done to make their transition into the organization easier and learn from their feedback and gather information about what else you should add to your orientation process. Ask them what other board member training they would have liked and then make improvements to your board orientation process based on what that departing director is telling you. So just in summary, an effective board orientation is an extremely good investment. There are the two components, the manual and the in-person meeting, both equally important. These components help to establish a strong foundation, sets the tone for positive involvement and increases performance of your new directors. It helps to ease the transition into your organization because there is really a form of training and learning it's designed to foster a deeper understanding of your organization and how your organization functions. And it leads the organization on a path towards success. I have referenced and used a number of resources. I would encourage you to visit our industry leadership website. There is the board manual template available for your use. There's also a number of fact sheets that uh, you may be interested in reviewing. And I do like the boardsource.org website, which has a, a resource called Key Questions to Ask Before Joining a Nonprofit Board, and a board member orientation checklist. Both of those are very useful as well. I would encourage you to stay connected with us. Feel free to send us questions to our email, which is leadership at gov.mb.ca. Certainly, I mentioned this earlier, visit us on our website and follow us on Twitter. There are a number of recorded webinars on our YouTube channel, which you can also view. Following the webinar, you will receive an email evaluation form, and if you're interested in requesting a copy of the presentation, definitely get in touch with us, leadership at gov.mb.ca. This is part of a webinar series, as I mentioned, and some of the other topics include taking minutes, which will highlight best practices to apply while taking minutes, designing some creative agendas. Um, there's another on alternative voting methods and how you can update your bylaws to ensure they allow for all options like electronic voting, um, online voting. Joanne Baker will also explore some of the topics around quiet leadership and she will discuss the characteristics of introverts and extroverts and showcase how involving both on your board can enhance communication and build a stronger organization. Again, thank you very much for joining us, and I would encourage you to join us for other webinars, which can be viewed on our YouTube channel.